there is a very common misconcept among most of the traders that I've been working with that strategy for some reason is the most important uh, element or segment in trading. And this is the thing that determines whether you're going to be successful or not. Truth is, you cannot be further away from the truth. In this video, we're going to talk about exactly this subject and I'm going to introduce to you my new software platform X. Let's do it. So before jumping into the actual trade, what you need to understand is that uh, you got to be aware of the context. You got to be aware of the higher time frames. You got to be aware of the larger picture. Why are you going to look for buys? Why are you going to look for sales? This is the part most people fail to understand, and this is why they are losing money. Another very interesting concept in, in general, when it comes to the markets, is that the market is moving in different segments. What do I mean by that? Let me open this thing. So here it is on the very higher time frame, let's say time frame number three, which is the biggest time frame. You are in a bullish trend, okay, and the price is doing something like that. On the lower time frames, however, this bullish trend is represented by another move. And this is the second time frame. On the third time frame, if we dig deeper, you will see that the second one is also represented by smaller waves. And if you ever studied Elliott waves or something in this direction, you will understand immediately what I mean. So we're not reinventing the wheel here, okay? What I'm trying to say is that every move that you see on the higher time frames is represented by a smaller trend on the lower time frames. So when we're looking at this pullback structure right here, on the lower time frames, this is a short-term bearish trend, okay? The idea is very simple. If you're able to see how these uh, different time frames are going along and how and when they're moving together, the chances are that if you start looking for buys somewhere around here, and you know that the pullback on the higher time frame is over, the pullback on the second time frame is over, and the pullback on the third time frame is over, your chances of success are much, much higher. Okay, what we're trying to understand here is how does the market move across the different time segments? This is the essence of it. So what I've tried to build with Platform X is exactly that. First of all, try to um, make people understand that the bigger picture, the larger view, is also as important, maybe even more important than the actual strategy itself. So here what we're looking at is the three segments, the long term, the medium term, and the short term. And you can think about these three time frames, okay, three segments. The longer term segment is represented by weekly, daily, and four hour charts. On the uh, very first part, you're going to see the direction. In our case, looking at what's that dollar franc, we have strong bullish in bearish correction. Okay, this is the main direction. Then you will see, uh, according to the proprietary algorithm, which direction is applying to each time frame. All right, so we can read it like that. Weekly is bullish, daily is bullish, four hour chart is bearish. And at the end, you will see this recommended action, which is telling you, all right, at this very moment, according to the rules of the algorithm, uh, the suggestion is to look for buys. Why? Because we have a strong bullish momentum or trend. And this bullish trend or momentum is inside a bearish correction, which means if we take a look at our simplified example, 
if this is a bullish trend, we're somewhere inside this wave right here. We're talking about the, the long term, right? This is the bigger view, number three. And we're somewhere inside here. So what we would expect now is for this thing to continue higher. And this is why the recommendation is to look for buys. So you're going to see uh, exactly the same thing. Let me just remove a few of those lines so we don't clutter the chart with too many drawings. But you're going to see exactly that for the medium term and the short term. So now it's very easy if you want to be looking for shorter term trades. Now we're focusing on number three, the pink one. And you can see that we have a strong bearish. Actually, that fits perfect with the example uh, given here. Three, two, this is supposed to be one, sorry. All right? So exactly what we said in the beginning, this pullback that we're experiencing on the higher time frame, the yellow one, on the uh, shorter time frames is represented by a strong bearish trend because we are looking at a trend here. Okay, and what Platform X is going to give you is the possibility to be trading all these waves and for you to be moving inside the inner, the intraday moves and for you to be uh, taking advantage of this thing combined as one, as a whole. So while the medium term is possible bearish reversal taking place, right? The, this makes sense now. So the higher time frame is bullish. The medium term is neutral because it still cannot decide whether this is going to be a reversal or not. And on the lower time frame, we already went um, to the bearish trend. So at some point when all this fits together, you will be able to trade very high reliability setups. Uh, when we're getting the pullbacks, you will be able to trade short term only on the lower time frames. You will be able to trade the opportunities that are creating, that are being created at this very moment, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm pretty sure that you understand how these three segments work. Now let's check out uh, the rest of it. First of all, you can go ahead and click this button whenever you're looking for um, for a given trade in a specific direction. You can simply click the button, right? And we lost connection for some reason, but you're going to see immediately um, the trading template, which is giving you a very short summary of the long term medium term and short term so for the short term we had uh the pullbacks and the sales for the long term we had the pullbacks and the buys right this is what it gives you then if you have the pivot points which is pretty self-explanatory in my opinion you can place them and remove them you have the supply and demand uh indicator which is going to give you this all these are super flexible and adjustable and that's pretty much it now again let's go to the next segment so you have the volatility analysis volatility analysis could be super helpful for the uh, short-term traders and the medium-term traders so there are two things let me mute it there are two things that uh, this thing is telling you. First of all, you're looking at the average move. This is how much the price is moving on average. That's based on 15 candles or 15 bars. Then you have the current move. And then we're comparing these two and we get the output. So you could be looking at positive numbers. You can be looking at negative numbers here. If you have a negative number, as we have in this case, it means that the current move is larger than the average move. And that's why we have a negative. As we can see, the price was uh, moving beyond the average move and we're already in a negative. This could be telling you two things. It's actually telling you two things. First of all, you are in a situation with high volatility. This is good if you're scalping. This is good if you're intraday trader. You know that you have volatility on the given time frame, on the given asset. 
On the other hand, it's also telling you that this move is extended and there could be pullbacks coming in. So you need to take these two things, apply them into your trading strategy, check for divergences, check for cycles, see how the chart looks like. Are there any um, resistances, supports on the way? What do you think about the market in general? Of course, you will be using this as well. So if the move is already extended, let's say on the weekly chart, we can see that we're already looking at possible pullbacks and short-term sales would make a lot of sense, right? Because this move is extended, we might be looking to trade pullbacks here, okay? So that's about volatility analysis. It tells you these two things. Uh, in my opinion, this is really helpful and you can see that across the multiple timeframes. Open exposure, goals, risk, et cetera, et cetera. Let's cover them very quickly. Open exposure is pretty self-explanatory. You see the current profit p &L, right? The profit and loss um, in terms of the currency that you have your account in and in terms of percentages. You're also going to see how many running trades you have and how many pending orders you have in place. This bar is going to get filled uh, in red or is going to get filled in green once you have some exposure. This is adjustable, meaning that if you say, okay, uh, maximum exposure I would like to have is 5%. So once you have a drawdown, you will start seeing this thing filling in, filling up, right? Or filling down. I don't know what's the correct way to say it, but I think you get the point. So once you're at minus 1%, minus 2%, minus 5%, we'll be right here, okay? And the idea of this thing is to keep you uh, in check and your account to not suffer very big drawdowns. It's a simple visual way to keep you on track of your current exposure, floating exposure. Many people forget about this and they start opening trades and opening trades and opening trades until it's too late. I know that if you're an experienced trader, you probably don't need it, okay? But still, I think it's a good, uh, a valuable option to have it just in case you often forget to see that. Goals and risk is probably very interesting, very dynamic, even though it's a very tiny uh, box that we see here. First of all, the goals. It's very nice when you are receiving a tap on the shoulder, right? Well done, good job. And many softwares are focusing on the drawdown, on the red line, on the red numbers, on the losses, basically. So I wanted to provide something um, which is not just about the exposure, the risk, the drawdown, but also to keep you in track of your goals. What you can do here is set weekly and monthly goals in uh, both percentages and in terms of money, depending on which way you prefer to do it. And once the goal is reached, you will see an alert, again, according to your preferences, it could be turned off or on, and you will see this thing filling in right here, depending on where do you stand on your uh, objectives, right? On the other hand, you have the risk, which is vice versa. You set your risk profile, how much in terms of percentages and uh, dollar or dollar amount. And once this thing starts filling, it means that you're currently experiencing losses. And once you reach your maximum risk, the limit, you will be notified. This is probably a bit more extended version of the open exposure because now you're working not just with floating profit or loss. Now you're working with closed trades. And the moment you have reached your uh, monthly or weekly risk limit, it's really a good idea to stop trading. This is super beneficial because it has a psychological effect. And another thing which I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but usually if you think about it, guys, this is very logical. If you're making money, 
you know that your graphic, the ideal graph, the, the performance graph is going like this. You're experiencing moments of drawdowns, moments of losses, then you're experiencing moments of um, targets, right? When you're reaching the targets and it goes up. So during these moments, usually the market doesn't agree with your strategy or your trading method doesn't work in these market conditions, whatever it is. So by having this risk profile enabled, it's very easy to stop trading and make this drawdown curve, this drawdown move limited, okay? Clearly in these market conditions, your strategy is not working. Why are you forcing it? Why do you keep exposing yourself to market conditions which are not delivering money to you? Simply stop. Once you figure out the balance between the best the best and optimal risk limit, okay? And how does it fit time-wise with the markets and your strategy? You will be able to minimize these drawdown periods, okay? Again, super beneficial. This is a long subject. I'm just throwing it there for, for you to think about it because again, many, many traders are really not considering that. Why are you forcing it? Just wait a week, just wait a few days. Market conditions will change. You are going to make money again. Why do you keep giving back to the market? It makes no sense. Just be patient. This is the easiest thing, right? To be patient, it doesn't require anything. Sit on your hands. That's it. So goals and risk. Um, I'm super proud with this feature. I haven't seen it, I guess, anywhere. So I, I really hope it will be useful for many of you. Asset strand, this is self-explanatory. It works for the FX pairs alone. Uh, what it does is basically takes um, the given currency, it calculates and it gives you an output, whether this is a strong or a weak currency. And the idea here is very simple. So in this example, we have uh, Euro and Aussie. This is the strongest, this is the weakest, right? You take the currency pair, Euro Aussie, and what you're going to see is that mo most likely, not most likely, factually, correct? This thing is moving, right? So if you go to your Aussie, well, let it just load, then we go, let's see the lower time frames. You can see volatility, right? And basically, we want to be uh, trading whenever there is good volatility in the given pair. So again, pretty self-explanatory, buy the weakness, sell, sell into the strength, and you're good to go. The info panel, again, this thing is created to fit different needs from scalpers to long-term to um, investment trading to swing trading. So in the info panel, you're going to see the asset name, you're going to see the spread, you're going to see the swap and the row of the three-day rollover date. Okay. So for those of you using CFDs and trading for some time, especially if you're doing longer term trades, you know how important these fields are. When are you paying? Um, positive and negative swap and when is the three day rollover so let's say you're trading something on the mid short term and you see that you're going to be paying three days a rollover on wednesday and today it's tuesday and it's in the afternoon well you can easily wait if the market allows it and open your trade on the next day Okay, so I mean, at least for me, these things are useful. I'm using many strategies. I'm using different methods of trading. And sometimes it's really necessary to, to see when exactly you're being charged, how much you're being charged, in what direction you're being charged, um, j just to have it out there, okay? All right, guys, so this is pretty much it. Uh, you probably saw the Black Friday offer. This is still valid until the end of the weekend. So 
make sure to grab your copy now would be the best time because you're going to get 25 percent off and if you like it please consider this software i'm sure it, it might be helpful for many people if you have any questions drop a comment or ping me in telegram i'll be happy to reply any queries that you might have thank you and have a wonderful weekend